Welcome to another video tutorial for Kling AI. Today, I will show you how I create looping videos. This can be useful for making longer videos, but I use it to create ambient videos that loop, which work well with music or nature sounds. It can also be used to create animations and looping videos for website backgrounds or as commercial advertisements that run on a loop. Let's start with this fireplace image. I generated it using Comfy UI and the Flux model with the following prompt. For more tutorials on Comfy UI, check out my main channel, Pixaroma. However, you can use any AI image generator you like. Then I went to the Kling AI website. There's a tab called AI Video, and now it has additional tabs on top like effects, elements, and frames. Today, I'll be using the Frames tab with Kling AI version 1.6. I upload my fireplace image as the first frame, and then there's an option called End Frame where I can upload the last frame. What I do is upload the same image because if it starts and ends with the same image, we can create a looping video. That was the easy part. The hard part is creating a descriptive prompt for it. For example, I use this prompt, which I created with ChatGPT, I've shown my method in other videos. You need to describe the scene and the motion. Um, I highlighted the, the motion part in yellow so you can see it better. Things like fire flickering, candles with their flames dancing subtly. For the animation, I added in the prompt that it should be seamless and loopable so it can transition back to the first frame. Most importantly, I didn't want the camera to move. This doesn't always work perfectly because if you have a moving object, and it goes too far to the edge, it will force the camera to move to show it. But what works for me most of the time is adding this in the prompt. The camera is fixed on a tripod, remaining completely static. Then I use professional mode, and for duration, I set it to 10 seconds so the loop isn't too obvious and there's more animation in the scene. Hit generate and wait a few minutes. After that, I get a video with a nice fire and candle animation that starts and ends with the same frame. You can download the video without a watermark if you have a subscription. Next, I use CapCut. I import the video, drag it to the timeline, and then if I hold the Alt key, I can drag a copy of it, or I can use copy and paste. So if I play from here close to the end, you can see how smooth the transition is from one video to the other because they have the same frame at the beginning and end. How cool is that? This way you can make really long videos on repeat or generate multiple loops and combine them to add variety to the animation. So this is how it looks and I can add a fire sound to it. I can also add some music to it. For the second project, I wanted to create a Zen temple. I use this prompt to create something relaxing with a candle, morning light, a waterfall, and water reflections. Going back to Kling AI, I selected AI videos and then chose uh, frames. I uploaded the same frame for both the start and end. Uh, for the prompt, I again tried to include moving elements, describing how the water moves, um, how the candle flickers and whether the camera should remain static or have a specific movement. For settings, I use um, professional and set the duration to 10 seconds, then hit uh, generate. Now the water reflection and the candle look really nice and have that Zen mood. The only problem is that the waterfall water doesn't move and the mist doesn't rise. I notice that it tends to animate things that are close up sometimes and more in focus. It can also animate about two to three things at once when I include too many animation elements in the prompt. Um, it tends to pick only a few and animate them. Um, you could create another prompt focusing solely on the waterfall animation with a static camera. Then you can mask them in CapCut and combine the animation you like from both videos. So you have a complete scene for the third project, I have this cute cartoon golden fish. I use this prompt. Since I use the Flux Dev model, all my prompts are long and descriptive, covering everything from the subject to the scene, environment, lighting, and mood. 
I again used the same image for the start and end frames and applied the same sample settings. For this prompt, I tried something different. I wanted to create a 360 degree rotation um, around the bolt. Here's the result. Let me show you in CapCut. You can see that it's loopable, but I only got about 90 degrees instead of the full 360 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure if it's possible to do it in a loop. I got a 360 degree rotation on a single frame without an end frame. But somehow the end frame limits the range of motion because it tries to return to that frame again. Still, it looks interesting and could be used in a loop as a background on a website or create looping reels for Instagram or YouTube shorts that repeats and gets you more views. There are some things that can cause problems like those bubbles. It didn't animate them and consider them as part of the bowl. So in cases like this where there are small elements and you know the camera is moving, you might want to use um, Photoshop to remove them to reduce mistakes during generation. Um, for the next project, I wanted to create a Kling AI device and a drone that flies around and scans the device. I use this prompt for image generation. I will include the prompts I used on my Discord server so you can access them for free, copy and paste them, and adapt them to work for you. I also tried a version without the end frame just to see how it looks. Um, it has a nice camera movement, but even with all the prompting, the loop still isn't perfect like it would be um, with an end frame. However, in some cases, you can still make it work. As you can see, it now jumps from one video to another, but I can select the duplicate and reverse it using this button. Now, when I play it, it's continuous again because the end frame is the same as the beginning frame since we reversed the video. For this case, it worked fine because the beam works both ways, but if you have rising smoke or moving characters, it will show that it's going backward. So it'll be obvious that it's not a continuous video. For the second one, I had a different prompt and for some reason, the drone was too static, even though I mentioned it was flying around my device seemed to have a glitch and that was the entire animation then i decided to be more specific with the drone movement so i added that the drone should move to the left and then come back um, well i got some movement but it was to the right instead then came back then i decided to change the the prompt again adding how i wanted the movement up and down left and right and so on that did help with the movement. I tried a second version and again, I got some movement. This was the final prompt I used. I should have done another one with a static camera too, just to see how it compares, but I am low on credits this month. I added both versions in CapCut and the good part is that they're still loopable since both videos have the same, you know, this start and end frames. I can combine multiple videos and they're all loopable. So I can insert a variation every now and then to make it more interesting. For the last project, I generated a futuristic background image and then used Photoshop to place my logo in perspective on that dark screen. Then in Kling, for the first try, I used a prompt where the camera follows the robotic arms movement, but I only generated five seconds because I ran out of credits. Somehow it forced the video to move too fast and it went too far for my preference. For the second try, I used a static camera so only the arm moves. This should loop better and look nicer, but it still had some errors uh, when the arm went too far. Then in CapCut, I decided I liked the second part of the video where it moves from up to down. So I used this icon to delete the left part of the video. There's also an icon to remove the right part. Now it only moves a small portion. I can duplicate that part and uh, reverse the video so I can create a loopable animation using only that portion. That's all for today. If you found something useful, don't forget to like and leave a comment to help this channel grow. Thank you for watching. See you on Discord.